let's dive in demons in the times of Jesus. So what we know is a demon is a supernatural being, it's a spirit, a divine force, a semi-divine being, it's an evil spirit or malevolent force. There's few basic things that you need to remember that the Bible teaches us in the New Testament concerning demons. The first one is that demons believe. Demons are not atheists, demons believe in God. In James chapter 2 verse 19 it actually says that you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. So at least we can believe and tremble. Come on somebody. So demons believe. Demons are not atheists. Demons are not agnostics. Demons are believers. Yet it still does not make them into Christians. They're not surrendered even though they believe in the existence of God and they tremble before Him. So that tells me that believing in the existence of God is not enough to go to heaven. You have to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. If you merely believe God exists, you're no different than demons. Demons have the same kind of a theology, understanding God is real, He's almighty and powerful. You got to trust in Jesus and you got to surrender your life to Jesus, something demons don't do. The second thing I want you to remember or notice from the New Testament teaching on demons is that demons acknowledged Jesus's humanity and deity. They acknowledged His deity. Something that Pharisees had a very difficult time embracing was Jesus, a son of God. Demons had no problem. So many intellectuals, smart people, atheists, agnostics have a difficult time, including the whole religion of Muslim people, have a difficult time acknowledging that Jesus is God. Nobody has a problem believing that Jesus was a good teacher, Jesus was a good man, that Jesus did good. But the issue of Jesus being the Son of God comes in very difficult for many people. Demons don't have a problem with that. In fact, in Matthew chapter 8 verse 29, it says, And suddenly they cried out saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, you the Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before time? So Jesus was acknowledged by demons as a Son of God. So for those of you who still have a difficult time embracing Jesus as a Son of God, I want to tell you something. Demons are ahead of you on that. Okay, they already know Jesus is the Son of God. They don't need to be convinced of that, but it still doesn't get him saved. Because it's not enough to know that Jesus is the Son of God. You got to place your trust in Him and His blood on the cross has to cover your sin. And Jesus did not die for demons. He died for you and I. Demons also acknowledge Jesus' humanity. For example, in Luke chapter 4 verse 34, it says that demons were saying, let us alone, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? That's acknowledging His humanity. Why did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So demons believe, demons acknowledge Jesus' deity and His humanity, which is one of the core beliefs of Christianity concerning Jesus Christ. The third thing I want you to remember if you're taking notes is demons cause physical violence. Demons can be violent when they manifest, which is mentioned in the Bible. We see this in few different deliverance stories of Jesus, but the most vivid one is Matthew chapter 8 verse 28. When Jesus came to the country of the Gentile country, we see that there met Him two demon-possessed men and they came out of the tombs and they were exceedingly fierce. The Bible says that no one could pass that way. There was a sense of violence that was caused by these demons. And many times in the ministry of deliverance, you will see that where demons are violent when they manifest. Um, demons, I believe, won't hurt a Christian because we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. But a lot of times what we're dealing is not only with the demon, we're dealing with a mental disorder or we're dealing with a person who has a schizophrenia or a person who has a bipolar and those people can hurt you because the blood of Jesus doesn't protect you necessarily from other human beings, but it does protect you from the demonic attacks. So demons cause physical violence. Uh, demons also cause torment, number four. Demons cause torment. We see this throughout the scripture, especially the New Testament, is that people were tormented with unclean spirits. Luke chapter 6 and verse 18. People were tormented with unclean spirits. Unclean spirits do not bless you. Unclean spirits do not make your life better. They torment. If you open your life to unclean spirits, all they know to do is to torment. All they were, all they have within them is torment. And so they will torment you. 
in the beginning they might come as children as uh, angels of light they might come as something that or someone that comforts you you know like your lost grandma or your lost um, boyfriend or girlfriend that passed away and now they appear to you or some kind of a spirit guide and they give you information they give you ideas they give you thoughts they speak to you and at first it seems like oh they're just innocent they're just like you know a little ghost that I have visiting me but you must understand their nature is to torment and the Bible says that Jesus dealt with demons that tormented others because that's what they do. Now I understand all of you listening to this, if you've been anywhere around Christianity or the Bible, none of this that I just shared is new. So let's go a little bit deeper and right now what we wanted to do is I want to talk about the names of these demons as mentioned in the New Testament. One is that the spirit of an unclean demon, that's Luke chapter 4 verse 33, the spirit of an unclean demon. That's a category of demons that are polluted, that are dirty. Well, all of the demons are like that. But it's interesting how a demon was called a spirit of an unclean demon. Another name for demons is an evil spirit. It's not just a bad spirit, evil. It's not just a foolish spirit, evil meaning it's bent on doing harm. Another name for demons is the spirit of the world and it says that in 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12, the spirit of the world. That means that the demons, they absorb and they are the ones that really propel all the garbage and all of the lies and weirdness that exists in the, in the culture today. Like we have people who, who are educated, smart, but they can't honestly say what is the definition of a woman or what is the definition of being a man or when does you know we begin when when is our birth begins when is our existence begin and guess what happens the enemy pushes these lies it they push all of these things that's why demons are called the spirit of the world they are the spirit behind the cultural decay cultural compromise that exists in this world another thing that demons another name that demons are called is they're called the spirit in the sons of disobedience Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Now what I want to do for the remaining time right now is go through the demons that are mentioned in the New Testament and pray for deliverance specifically for people who are facing these demons. I want you to prepare your heart right now for those of you that are watching, for those of you that are re-watching and for those of you that maybe will be playing this video somewhere else or listening on the podcast, prepare your heart wherever you are at because we're going to be praying for deliverance right shortly after I mention the names of these spirits. Now we all have dealt with demons that are not mentioned in the Bible but today I want to, for the sake of the teaching being titled Demons of the New Testament, I want to touch on demons mentioned in the New Testament. The first demon or the first spirit is the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1 7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. A spirit of fear, it's a demon that causes unnatural fear that invades your life. The fear of circumstances, the fear of death, the fear of driving a car, the fear of people, the fear of going insane, the fear of getting sick and dying, fear that's like chronic timidity, paranoia, fear of isolation, fear of failure, fear of losing a job, fear of getting married, fear of getting sick, horrors and nightmares. And there is a healthy fear that we all could have like you know if you go to a uh, high-rise um, apartment you will have a fear concerning you know looking down or coming close to the edge that's normal there's a God's fear and God's fear is when you have reverence for God but every other fear you know you can experience moments of them and that's fine the Bible tells us you know that I am not afraid though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death that means that it's natural to be scared when you're going through difficult times but when this natural fear which is subdued by the presence of God, by the promises of God. When you give it a foothold, it can become unnatural. What it's no longer an emotion, it's no longer a, a just a thought, it's now an evil spirit. It could have started as a circumstance, it could have started as an emotion, 
but because you fed it and you opened the door to it and now you're paranoid and now you're afraid now you can sleep during the night without turning you know without leaving your lights on or maybe you're afraid of driving or maybe you're afraid of something always haunting you and and coming after you and God wants to set you free if you are possessed oppressed harassed controlled by fear God wants to set you free I've had a personal experience when I had the spirit of fear that was attacking my life I wasn't I honestly can't say whether like it lived inside of me or it was attacking me on the outside but I knew that it was attached to my life and then I experienced deliverance and I experienced freedom from that I've also prayed for people who had spirits of fear and some of them manifested and were delivered some of them just literally felt something lose them and then after that whatever things that were holding them back were broken off of their life spirit of fear has no place in your life if you believe in that drop that in the chat right now or in the comment the spirit of fear has no place in my life this spirit will cripple you this spirit will hold you back but right now through the power of the name of Jesus we're going to come against that spirit of fear if you're battling with a spirit of fear if you're being harassed and you're being attacked with a demon of fear I want you to open up your heart right now and I want you to get ready to receive prayer ask the Lord to forgive you for any sins maybe you've committed ask the Lord to forgive you for any doors you've opened and let me just pray with you right now as before we go any further let me just pray with you right now Father in the name of Jesus I thank you for the person that is watching, re-watching, listening or re-listening later on. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you Lord God that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but spirit of power, spirit of love and the spirit of a sound mind. In the name of Jesus, I break right now and sever every tie the spirit of fear has over the person that is watching this broadcast in Jesus' name. That evil unclean spirit that is crippling them, the spirit that is un causing unnatural fear, the, the fear of circumstances, the fear of death, nightmares and horrors. In the name of Jesus Christ, every paranoia and chronic timidity, the fear of going insane, the fear of people, the fear of death, the fear of accidents or, or driving a car. In the name of Jesus, be free right now from the spirit of fear. Be loosed right now from the spirit of that controlling, spirit of fear in Jesus mighty name and Holy Spirit come right now where there is a spirit of fear and replace it with the spirit of faith and replace it with an attitude and with the presence of God in Jesus name for those of you watching if you've had a problem with fear I want you to take a deep breath and just breathe it out and just place your hand up on yourself where you are at right now and just say in the name of Jesus I break off every chain of fear over my life, over my mind, over my soul and over my mind and over my emotions in Jesus' name. I declare myself free right now. Be free in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The second spirit that I want to mention is, the Bible is very clear about it as well, is the spirit of infirmity. The spirit of infirmity and this is dealing with Jesus, dealing with the woman at the synagogue who had it for 18 years. Um, these demons of infirmity many times are behind allergies, diabetes, arthritis, cancer, constant weaknesses, mental disorder, hunchback, organ failure, nerve disorders, chronic rash, fungal infections and some of these demons are also generational. That means they went from one generation to another. It's a cycle of sickness that exists in the family tree. If you are facing a demon or a spirit of infirmity and sometimes how would you know if it's a spirit of infirmity versus just an infirmity? When it's just a sickness, medication usually helps. Going to the doctor, getting a surgery, um, going on, receiving prayer for healing. If it's just a sickness, medicine and prayer for healing, exercising, uh, eating properly solves the problem. When it's generational curse, or when it's a spiritual problem, you don't get rid of it by prayer for healing. You don't get rid of it by taking medicine. It has to be removed spiritually. The woman who was had a problem with her back for 18 years, Jesus did not pray for her healing first. He delivered her. And then He laid hands on her and immediately she was made straight. 
Some people have a spirit of infirmity behind their disease because the spirit of infirmity causes this. Even if you get somehow rid of this disease, the spirit of infirmity will give you three other ones. And it's like you're constantly always sick. Sometimes the spirit of infirmity operates in such a way where you have pain and the doctors and every scan they do on you, every test they put you through, they cannot diagnose it. They cannot find the cause and they cannot find that disease. They're like, we just don't see it. We just, there is just no evidence of that because it's caused by an evil spirit and you can be delivered. And when you are delivered, you can be healed. So we're going to pray for that in just a moment. But I've seen it quite a few times actually when a person came for healing and we would pray for deliverance, demons would manifest and the demon would say, I caused their sickness. Sometimes demons would attach themselves to a particular organ and the moment we would command the Holy Spirit's fire to come like on kidneys or, or even lungs or on, on their blood and the demon would right away, you know, scream and yell because he attaches and causes pain and torment in that particular organ. Some demons, they attach themselves to somebody's spine and uh, many times when I would pray for people, I would see like, like in my in the eye of my um, in of my mind, I would see like like almost like a scan, and I would see like a particular dark spot over a particular part of their body. And as I would begin to pray for that, you know, the Holy Spirit will begin to move in that area. And there were times where demons would say, you know, how did you know I was there? Well, I, I didn't know. The Holy Spirit knew where the demon was hiding. And then when you target that demon hiding in that particular organ then you can experience, that person can experience deliverance. If you have constant reoccurring sicknesses and problems and if they are chronic and generational, you know, seek deliverance. There is such a thing as a spirit of infirmity, a demon that causes sickness and disease. The sickness and disease just happens part of broken world we live in. We all get sick and, um, and we all need to practice better eating, um, healthier living and everything. But there are some sicknesses called, caused directly by demons and medication cannot help in those cases. It could maybe subdue the effects of those diseases but it cannot remove those diseases. I remember we had a lady that was had a sleep apnea and she would sleep with all these machines and she came, I think it was her first time, her kids brought her to church. We started to pray for her, older lady and she starts manifesting and the demon said, I am a destroyer. And so uh, the demon pretty much came in to destroy her life through sickness. And when the demon was cast out, she went home and she had no more sleep apnea. God completely healed her after He delivered her. And that's been the case with a lot of healings that we've seen in our ministry is when people come for healing but they experience deliverance and a lot of times either their bodies heal so uh, like dramatically so fast or they instantly get healed. I do believe that deliverance doesn't always bring healing but there are times when deliverance can lead to healing. In the story of the woman who had 18 years of problem with her back, Jesus delivered her and then He said, the Bible says, He laid His hands on her and she was made straight. And so for those of you who pray for healing for other people, you know, start with coming against any generational curse and any spirit of sickness. And that's what we're going to do in just a moment. The third spirit that I want to highlight that's mentioned in the New Testament is the spirit of Python or the spirit of divination. Now we see that in Acts chapter 16 verse 16 that it happened when Paul and Silas was going to prayer. There was a girl possessed with a spirit of divination. The spirit of divination is there to deceive. This girl who had the spirit of Python or the spirit of divination, she was actually saying the right things but she was under the demonic influence. The source of what she was saying was not from God. And a lot of times, you know, psychics or people who do palm reading or people who will read your future, uh, people who will predict things will say things like, well, I am correct. Um, you know, I just told you what your grandma told me about you and therefore because I am correct in my information, it makes my source, my inspiration also correct. 
but even a broken clock will get a time correct twice a day. Being correct with or being spot on with a word does not mean that the source and the inspiration is the Holy Spirit. The girl who was talking about Paul and Silas was 100% accurate in her description of Paul. She said these are servants of Most High God and Paul was provoked because she was saying the correct things but from a wrong source. The spirit of divination operates through a cult as well as through uh, cults like Freemasonry, Mormonism, Scientology, secret societies, New Age, Jehovah Witnesses, Eastern religions, fortune telling, chain letters, black and white magic, calling out the devil, hypnosis, uh, neurology, Satan worship, water witching, levitation and charms, Ouija boards, uh, curses, horoscopes, zodiac signs, as well as dream catchers. When you begin to connect with things like these, whether it's a cult or you begin to practice these occultic practices, you open your life for the spirit of divination. If you ever practiced fortune telling or you went to a fortune teller, most likely you are being harassed and being attacked and you need deliverance from a spirit of divination or spirit of python. The devil wants to deceive you and lie to you. If you're watching me right now and maybe you think there's nothing wrong with that and just Christians are just kind of overzealous and uh, kind of too radical, too fanatical. My friend, there's nothing fanatical about what I'm saying to you right now. Demons are real and when you go to the other side, meaning when you seek help from other sources than the Lord, you do expose yourself to the demonic influence more than through any other way in your life and there will be this demon that is going to harass you and torment you. Also, there are people who are quote unquote prophets and dreamers who get correct information from the other realm that could be demonic. There were instances and I won't go into details because we've had some stuff happen even in our own church where people would you know be discerners, um, dreamers, have words you know and when you have the Holy Spirit you will have this nudge you will have this this uh, in, like this Holy Spirit's like discernment saying this is this doesn't seem right and you have to be very careful that you don't fall for every word and you don't fall for every dream from every person because there are people who can say something that sounds so correct but it could be so wrong and instead of falling to deception, we have to allow to allow the Holy Spirit to give us discernment. That's why I always tell Christians, don't live by prophecies. Live by the Word of God. Develop your own personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Prophecies were sent to confirm things God has spoken to you, not to replace God speaking to you. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. That means that God wants to speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. You might not be a prophet but you can still hear God's voice. You might not have a ministry of deliverance but you're still called to cast out demons. Christians, please, I beseech you by the mercies of God, do not fall prey to people who are right now even doing miracles, signs and wonders, prophesying and do all, doing all of these things but who have a very fishy, weird sources. Let's not fall prey to stuff like that because we can expose ourselves to demonic influences. I'm not saying that every time you buy innocence or naive, na being naive, you know, you expose yourself to stuff like that, that you have a demon. But if you keep exposing yourself to stuff like that, knowing and seeing the fruit of ministries and men and women that we call men and women of God sometimes, not knowing for sure what they're filled with, we can expose ourselves to the demonic influence. As well as believers, don't assume that just because your words came true, the one that you predicted, prophesied, foreseen, that you are automatically possessed by the Holy Spirit. Many people will say in that day, in your name we cast out demons, we prophesied, but Jesus will say, I don't know who you are. So that tells me that every miracle, spiritual manifestation that is done through my life, 
is not a validation, confirmation or a proof of my standing and my walk with the Lord. We have to have accountability and we have to be responsible to take ownership of our relationship with God and not use the fact that, hey, the gift is operating. Because the gift can be operating and that gift may be started from God. But then because I am rooted in my own sin and I'm rooted in my own rebellion to God, what could happen is this, is I could be like Balaam, you know, one day saying one thing and then dying like a, like a soothsayer. That's what uh, Joshua, I think, called uh, Balaam as a soothsayer. Not as a prophet of God, but as a soothsayer. And so we have to be very careful. And this right now is very dangerous territory for so many people because the spirituality in America is on the rise. Christianity is on a decline, but spirituality is on the rise. We are streaming to TikTok and there's so many people on TikTok, especially the millennials who have open mind toward the spiritual world and they're exposing them, themselves to demons. The demonization in United States is through the roof. This, what we see today in our culture, used to be the issue in third world countries. An uh, issue in countries like uh, Russia and somewhere in Siberia where people have shamans and, you know, uh, talk to nature and did all kinds of chants to get the rain and to get the snow and to get the sunshine and, you know, educated people, Westerns, you know, stayed away from stuff like that. But since the pandemic, there has been a, an interest, a hunger. Go to the youth section in your library, in your city or country. You'll be surprised how much fiction and even non-fiction category is filled with how to consult your angel, how to work with your angel, how to read the stars, how to, you know, uh, do miracles, how to connect, you know, with the spirit realm, how to connect with, you know, with this universal consciousness and all of this stuff. And all of that is not just naive, innocent information. All of that is an open door to demonic infiltration. And people today are operating under that. And because they feel good, or because they're like, well, it's the white spirit that visited me. Or it's a, it's a spirit guide that talks to me. He is innocent or she is innocent. I'm getting so much information. Like I'm putting the law of attraction into practice and I am manifesting success and I am manifesting goodness and I want to do good in my life. So did the girl that was possessed with the spirit of divination. She wasn't a hooker. She wasn't a dope dealer. She was bringing profit by fortune telling. Wow, profit. Like I know people who go to demons to get profit and they become broke because most of the time that's going to be the case. This girl, she was successful. She actually brought profit. But Paul, recognized by the Spirit of God and maybe some of you will look at that like, whoa, I, I don't get it. So demons can give profit temporarily, yeah, they can as long as they achieve their ultimate goal which is to blind you toward the gospel and get you distant from the Lord, focused on money, whatever that can get you blinded spiritually, whether it's money, whether it's drugs, whether it's sex, whether it's another religion. That's, what, that's how they measure success. And the fact that she was able to bring some profit, you know, maybe she felt good about her gifts. But Paul, he saw right through that and he drove, out a, drove a spirit out. So if your goal is to make money, well, you will use God, use other sources. But if your goal is to please God and to go to heaven and to live in relationship with God, then you will not focus on trying to get profit by any means possible. You will look at the scripture and by the scripture you will judge every spirituality. Not every spirituality is scriptural. Not everything you hear is from God and not everything that we see today, not every miracle has its origin from God and we have to differentiate and we have to have discernment. And so 
I really want to encourage you today, don't be blinded by profit, don't be blinded by success and don't be blinded by a law, a truth or an idea that because it made somebody money, especially like the law of attraction, especially you know manifesting and you know uh, thanking the universe and having the universe give you stuff back, like all of that stuff, it's not just positive thinking. We're all for positive thinking but the moment you begin to connect with the spiritual source, you're connecting with the dark one. Even if it's bringing you fortune, profit, it's also baiting you into I am God. It's baiting you into reincarnation. It's baiting you into God is a force that cannot be known. It's, it's baiting you into Jesus is just an enlightened man. He's not the Son of God. It's baiting you into that and the devil will pay whatever money he needs to pay as long as you can walk away from the true and narrow path that leads to life and be on a broad path where you can do whatever you want. Focus on materialism, focus on lust and focus on greed and focus on all of those things. I know I took a little bit longer on this one but the spirit of divination. We're going to pray for that in just a moment. For those of you who are harassed by the spirit of a snake, by the spirit of a python. Number four spirit mentioned in the Bible is the spirit of bondage and that's in Romans chapter 8 verse 15. And we see this, you did not receive the spirit of bondage. Spirit of bondage a lot of times is behind an addiction to alcohol, drugs, smoking, gambling, video games, as well as lighter addictions like food, television, phone, computer, money, work, sleep or constant tardiness. There's some people literally like just, you're always late, you never, never on time and it could be a, a demon. Um, I remember one man of God told me one time, he said, if you're addicted to anything, you have a company. Woo. Come on, drop that in the chat. If you're addicted, comma, you got company. And so if you're addicted to anything or like if we even say phrases like, I'm so addicted to this, like if you're addicted, you got company. If you can't live without it, you got company my friend. And that company is probably not the Holy Ghost and His angels, the angels of God. This is some other company that you need to be delivered from. And today we're going to be praying the spirit of bondage will be broken in Jesus' name. Number five demon mentioned in the New Testament and that is deaf and dumb spirit. Mark chapter 9 verse 25, Mark chapter 9 verse 22 describes what that spirit does. This was a child that was harassed. Now this demon is dumb but it's not stupid. Deaf and dumb spirit has some forms of epilepsy foaming gnashing um, as well as falling on the ground violently. It can cause epilepsy, <laughs> suicidal tendencies and paranoia. It can also cause a person to be physically mute, have ear issues, problem with your ears, um, have urge to drown yourself and it can produce blindness as well as burning. Similar to spirit of infirmity, the only difference is this demon really wants to bring death into your life through all of these means. A lot of times you can do deliverance on a person and actually a demon can make them mute, deaf or blind. I remember praying for this kid and this was like a two-month battle um, and we were fasting and praying for him and during one of the deliverance sessions he went deaf for about maybe 20-30 minutes and so um, then the demon released his ears um, then he went mute he could not pronounce a word and then he went blind after that like all three it was a very extensive very long um, deliverance but demons try to really do that to cause distraction and as well as to really shut down different faculties in this person's body and Demons might try to all of that but they're not as powerful as the name of Jesus Christ and I believe that even today deaf and dumb spirit has to go in Jesus name. Number six is the spirit of slumber. I mentioned that last week. Romans chapter 11 verse 8 quotes the 
I think it's Isaiah's verse. It talks about that God has given them spirit of uh, slumber. And we talked about actual spirit of sleeping uh, where people constantly, constantly sleep, not because they're tired, uh, but because actually like they sleep and they just seem to never get rest. Um, they're constantly sleeping behind the, the wheel. They're sleeping in the, in the church service. And, and this could also be spiritual slumber as well. Number seven is seducing spirit. Seducing spirit in 1st Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 it says, Now the spirit expressly says that in the latter, latter days some will depart from the faith. And that's what's happening right now with this whole deconstructing Christianity, deconstructing your faith. People are leaving their faith. A lot of people are walking away from Christian faith and Apostle Paul said that's exactly what's going to happen. And he's giving us the root of the problem and he says people will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Again, very similar to Python. Deceiving, seductive spirits. These are not necessarily spirits that cause seduction into sexual immorality. Their goal is to cause seduction that you will cheat on Jesus. You will betray Jesus. You will betray your Christian faith. And they want you to walk away from your Christian faith. They cause deception. They will cause disappointment. They will cause a defeat, an offense. Give you false signs and wonders. They could come through music, movies and also cause you to depart from your faith. So that afterwards you will say, you know what? Uh, I can't be a Christian anymore. Just, just so much problems in the church. I just tried this and you know, I'm just kind of walking away from my faith. I'm just, just kind of make up a religion as I go. And um, yeah, you actually could be led and you actually heeding and giving in to seductive deceiving spirits if you're walking away from your faith. You're not just walking away from your faith because you found problems in the Bible. It's because now demons are feeding you with wrong information. There's so many books that you can read, Christian books from apologists that can help you to know your faith more. You can study your own faith more so you can be grounded. But a lot of these walking away from faith, Paul says, it's not because you know there's finally somebody found the proof that God doesn't exist. Paul is saying there are spirits that are seducing people. Number eight is the spirit of Antichrist. And the spirit of Antichrist is, the Bible says, the one that does not confess Jesus Christ. Spirit of Antichrist is also the one that rejects atonement, focuses on humanism and it's anti-Christian. And the spirit of Antichrist really operates in uh, Judaism that rejects Jesus as the Messiah. It also operates in Islam that sees Christianity as someone that invented Jesus as God and perverted the real Jesus and Muslims, God bless their heart, they believe that Jesus is the Savior, Prophet and Messiah but not the Son of God and that God has no need of a Son. And eventually the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist will be manifested in a man named Antichrist who will be the man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, he will be the wild beast who will have an open rebellion against God and he will try to defeat saints. But there's also demons called the spirit of Antichrist that will operate in people and we're going to pray for deliverance from that as well. The last one I want to mention and then we're going to pray. Are you guys still with me? I see, uh, I see your chats coming through but I just kind of am focusing more on the teaching and uh, wanted to just take a moment and say, hey, if you're still with me, drop number one in the chat. As well as if you are re-watching or just tuning in, I want to say welcome. Don't forget to hit thumbs up and share this broadcast with other people. Uh, and if you're re-listening, hey, I just want to say I appreciate you. Let's just take a second and just show that appreciation to each and every one of you. Drop number one in the chat if you're still with me, if you're receiving this and you're ready for prayer, which we're going to do in just uh, a minute or so. So let's recap quickly the spirits that are mentioned in the New Testament. Uh, the spirit of fear, the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of divination, the spirit of python, the spirit of bondage, deaf and dumb spirit, spirit of slumber, seducing spirit, spirit of antichrist, 
and spirit of error. This is different than a mistake. Um, spirit of error. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. And he who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. And so this spirit works together with the spirit of lying, spirit of antichrist, seducing spirits. Person under the influence of the spirit, uh, spirit of error rarely know that they are in error. Of course, I really believe it operates in new age because it you know promotes new age because new age is really an old lie of the devil that it just has a new wrapping paper it focuses on reincarnation ability to become God humans are divine Jesus is the enlightened man truth love and peace and all of that um, just pretty much a state of consciousness and God is just this force he can't be known as a person and there's many ways to heaven um, not just one way to heaven and so and Paul talks about that uh, John talks about that, that there is a spirit of error. I want you to prepare your heart right now. I want to take this moment to begin to pray with us right now uh, for deliverance. Uh, if you are dealing with that and maybe today this will be another step toward your deliverance. But for some of you this will be a moment maybe God wants to bring complete deliverance in your life right now. I want you to just repent of your sins whatever sins that God brings into your heart if you need deliverance just say Lord wash me with your blood cleanse me by your blood right now in Jesus name come on just ask them to wash you right now maybe you've opened the door to demons maybe you've slid back into some sin just ask him to wash you right now just pray that prayer you can pray out loud right in front of that tv screen computer ipad whatever you are watching or listening to this say Lord Jesus I repent for opening the door to the demonic influence in my life. Wash me with your blood and make me clean right now. I want you to right now renounce any claim that the enemy might have had or has toward your life. Maybe it's drugs, maybe it's witchcraft, maybe it's lies that you have embraced. It's just renounce this. Say, Lord, I renounce that right now. I renounce, renounce those drugs. I renounce that fear. I renounce right now the spirit of Python. I renounce right now witchcraft in Jesus' mighty name. I renounce that sickness. I renounce generational curses. I renounce every soul tie in Jesus' name. I renounce every spoken word of curse, every spell pronounced over my life in the mighty name of Jesus. I renounce that right now just say that out loud with me say I renounce every soul tie I renounce every demonically spoken word I renounce every word curse I renounce generational curses right now in the name of Jesus Christ I break those curses I break that claim I break that oath I break that connection to the enemy in Jesus mighty name Amen. Amen. And right now I'm going to pray uh, for you that you will experience that freedom. And so just place your heart, place your, uh, just your heart wherever you are at right now, upon, your hand upon yourself. Lord, I thank you for your freedom in Jesus' name. And Lord, as your child, as your servant, I agree with my brothers and sisters for their freedom right now. For those that are watching in different parts of the world and I speak Lord your word to come forth and to bring freedom and deliverance in the name of Jesus. I come against every spirit of fear and I command it to go right now in Jesus name. Every spirit of infirmity go in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of infirmity that is causing allergies, that is causing diabetes, that is causing arthritis and cancer in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demon that is causing tumors right now, every demon that is causing growth in the body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command you to go right now. Every demon that is causing constant weakness, mental disorder, organ failure, nerve disorder in the name of Jesus, be gone right now. Every eczema, every chronic rash or every fungal infection in Jesus' mighty name. That demon, I command you, go right now. Exit right now. Leave right now. Out in Jesus' mighty name. 
generational chronic disease that is running rampant in that family tree. I break that curse right now by the name of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free in Jesus name from generational curse of disease. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ from the generational curse of fibroids in Jesus mighty name. Generational curse of barrenness in Jesus name. High blood pressure in the name of Jesus constant obesity obesity in the name of Jesus I break that curse in the name of Jesus Christ I remember I was praying one time and one person lost supernaturally weight they told me I didn't even see, see the difference because I didn't know them before and they said that they lost weight physical weight and it was reflected on the weight scale God can set you free right now if you feel like it's spiritual I just come against that together with your faith right now in Jesus mighty name be free in Jesus name from that evil spirit of infirmity in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against every spirit of divination, every demon that has entered through all kinds of dream catchers, Ouija boards, charms, all kinds of open doors in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of deception, the spirit of lying, go right now in Jesus' name. Be free in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire against every spirit snake. Holy Ghost fire against every python demon. Holy Ghost fire against every spirit of divination, a spirit of deception and spirit that blinds people to the truth in Jesus mighty name. Holy Spirit come right now in Jesus name. Deliver right now. People coming from Freemasonry, people coming from Mormonism, people coming from secret societies. Lord, I speak freedom to that person right now. That demon hiding in that body, hiding in that soul, in the flesh. Exit right now. Leave right now. Get out right now in Jesus name. Be free in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against every spirit of bondage. Every demon that is behind addiction right now. Addiction to drugs, addiction to alcohol, addiction to smoking and gambling, addiction to video games, addiction to pornography. In Jesus mighty name, I break your grip right now. That craving for drugs, that appetite for those ungodly substances in Jesus name. Be free from that right now. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now. Get out right now in the name of Jesus. Get out right now from that father. Get out right now from that mother. Get out right now from that child in Jesus mighty name. You unclean, evil, dirty spirit, loose your grip off of this person right now in Jesus name. Thank you Holy Spirit that you are setting them free right now. Thank you Holy Spirit that you are liberating right now. Instead of bondage, you're giving them the spirit of adoption. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against every deaf and dumb spirit that is causing thoughts to drown yourself, thoughts to kill yourself, thoughts that cause you to act violent and takes over you in the name of Jesus. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb spirit, come out right now in Jesus' name. Come on people, just, just, just command it out. Command it out, just breathe it out. Whatever that you gotta do, burp it out, puke it out, whatever it is. Sometimes you feel something is happening and just, 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 just let it happen. Just let it happen. Let the Holy Spirit drive all of that stuff out. So many testimonies come out of people like watching a video like this and like throwing up or like stuff just like not uncontrollable tears begin to come out or sweating out of nowhere. And so that's Holy Ghost that is driving that stuff out. In the name of Jesus, suicidal tendencies, epilepsy, in Jesus mighty name, deaf and dumb spirit, paranoia, problems with your ears, muteness, deafness, in Jesus name, come out right now in Jesus mighty name. In Jesus' name, deaf and dumb spirit, out in Jesus name. I command you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, come out in the name of Jesus. Loose your grip off of that person right now. Loose your grip off of that person right now. You have no right I break your legal right right now in the name of Jesus through repentance and renouncement. Go right now in Jesus' name. Be free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I come against every seducing spirit, every spirit of lies and doubts that seeks to pull you away from the Lord. Be free in Jesus' name. This cloud of doubt, cloud of lies in the mighty name of Jesus, Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of that person right now. Your spirit of deception. Your spirit of seduction. Your spirit that torments God's people. And be loosed right now from that person in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the spirit of truth that is coming. 
I thank you for deliverance and freedom that is coming to people that are watching this broadcast right now in Jesus mighty name. Holy Spirit come right now. Precious Holy Spirit with your fire come right now. For those of you who have pain in your body, I want you to just place your hand upon your body where it's at right now. If you have infections, if you have a disease or sickness, if you feel comfortable uh, dropping that in the comment, we will have believers together with you right now agreeing for your healing. Instant miracles can happen right now. Nothing is impossible to God. Just drop that in the comments if you feel comfortable. If you don't, the Lord is gonna the Lord is gonna notice you. The Lord knows where you're at. But if you feel comfortable, you can drop that in the comments. And I want you, the rest of you who are healthy, would you help me and pray right now for people who have thyroid problems, people who have chronic anxiety, people who have back problems, people right now who have dizziness. In the name of Jesus, people who have all kinds of um, uh, 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 autoimmune disease, uh, people who have all kinds of scoliosis problems right now with liver healing in Jesus mighty name with blood circulation, sinus infection. If you're noticing right now a name and you are a believer, would you agree with me right now for these people? Would you lift a prayer right now together with me where you are watching from? Can, can we agree? Uh, our team right now that's watching this, we're agreeing, agreeing with you for your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against every disease and sickness right now. Lord, we ask you for your healing to manifest right now in the bodies of God's people. Holy Spirit, touch them right now in Jesus' mighty name. I speak healing right now to every problem in the brain. Chemical misbalance, any kind of uh, attack of the enemy on the brain in the name of Jesus. Any tumor or growth in the brain. I command you to be broken off of this person right now. Lord, let your healing come right now to the brain. Let your healing come to the eyes. Let your healing come to the ears right now. For those people who lost the smell and taste because of COVID, let it be restored to you right now. Be restored. Let smell and taste be restored in Jesus' name. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you have a problem in your throat and you have a difficult time swallowing. It feels like a, knee, like a needle, like a sharp needle. The Lord is touching your throat right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you are healing thyroids. Lord, heal thyroids right now. I speak healing for every thyroid issue in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I speak healing right now and I pronounce your word over irregular heartbeat over heart problems in the name of Jesus, over blood problems in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak healing right now for the blood in the mighty name of the Lord. Lord, I ask you that you will touch kidneys, that you will touch liver right now, digestive issues, every acid reflex be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you Holy Spirit. Lord, I, I pray that you will bring healing right now to people's lower back, that you will bring healing right now to those people who have spasms, who can't lift their arms because of injuries. Let, let movement and mobility come right now. Come on. Holy Spirit is touching you. There's, there's some people right now, you have no mobility in your legs or you can walk, but it's just with very difficulty. I want you to right now rise on your feet where you're watching. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch those knees right now. Lord, touch those legs right now. Holy Spirit, I ask you that your fire will fall from waist down all the way to the soles of their feet. Holy Spirit's fire, touch that area right now. Touch the muscles, touch the joints. Whatever is broken, Lord, let it be healed and restored right now in Jesus mighty name. Walk for the glory of God. Walk for the glory of God. Walk for the glory of the name of Jesus. Begin to take that step without pain. Begin to take that step without that cane. In Jesus mighty name. Thank you Father. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Lord. Thank you Holy Spirit. In Jesus name. Lord I speak your healing over skin infection, skin disease, rashes, uh, spots showing up in different places. Lord, let your healing virtue come right now. Be healed in your skin right now in the name of Jesus. I love you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. 
thank you precious father let your healing virtue flow right now let your healing come right now in jesus name god is touching somebody's knees Whether it was arthritis or you had problem, you had other problems with your knees, just receive your healing right now. Place your hand upon your knee right now and just, just say, Lord, I thank you that you are touching my knees right now. If you had pain in your knees or you couldn't stand too long or, or you had some other complication or maybe you were scheduled for a surgery, just let the Lord touch you right now. Holy Spirit, touch right now that person with their knee in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. The lower part of your abdomen be healed right now. That person on TikTok, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Those who have a problem bending and you have a problem with the lower back, whether it was an injury, um, an accident, or just you're just older, I want you to place your hand up on the lower part of your back right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. As you healed the woman who had a problem with back, with her back, I speak your word right now, and you said you you sent your word and you healed them. Heal that person right now. I rebuke that pain in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit's anointing come right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Some of you will feel like a tingling right now in the lower part of your back, or like a like a like a heat, like a warmth heat. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Just receive. Begin to do something you could not do without pain. For the glory of God. For the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And one more thing. I really feel in my heart to pray for somebody who has a cyst. That you have cysts in your body. And God wants to surgically, supernaturally remove them right now. If you have a cyst in your body, and maybe even you can feel it like a golf ball. Let's pray right now that it's going to be gone in the name of Jesus. Especially ovarian cysts. Those women who have ovarian cysts right now. Lord, I speak your word of healing. I commend that cyst not only to shrink, but to completely be gone. And the season of cysts has come to an end. Thank you, Lord. I rebuke any power operating behind those cysts. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the name of Jesus of Nazareth, by the power of Jesus the healer, Jehovah Rapha, be restored in your health. Be restored in those organs right now that have a cyst attached to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit with the sword of the Spirit Lord, let it dis I disconnect that cyst right now and let healing come to that part of the body in Jesus name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For those of you who had pain, I'm going to ask you to do something by faith, okay? Because a lot of times you receive prayer and nothing can happen. Um, I want you to activate your faith right now, especially those who had pain that was verifiable, meaning you felt it before. I want you to get up right now and do something you could not do. Now, if you're driving a car, like maybe stop your car and just get out of your car for just a second, okay? Do something you could not do. The guy who had a withered hand, when Jesus told him to stretch his hand, his hand was made perfectly well at that moment. That's exactly how God can heal you. Come on, just do that. Just receive that. And if you did that, just type in the, in the chat, I receive the prayer prayed by Pastor Vlad and the rest of the people that are watching us right now. It's not just me that was praying. Other people were cheering you on in prayer. They say, I receive and begin to exercise your faith and you know if you notice something happened or something is happening please don't be stingy always share your testimony let us know let us know in the chat let us know in the comments or let us know let me know personally by going to hungrygen.com forward slash testimony i get those testimonies in my email and i read them so let me know that what's happening to you those of you who will be re-watching or maybe you tomorrow or the next day you'll notice hey my smell is back hey ever since that prayer i don't have pain in my joints anymore praise god make sure you go and find this video find the link in this video and let us know for the glory of god for the glory of god that's all it's about that's what this is all about 
this is not for my glory this is for his glory because it's his in his name we cast out demons and in his name we heal the sick come on somebody thank you Jesus and I'm seeing already testimonies coming through I'm seeing testimonies already coming through some people maybe are saying that by faith um, maybe some of you are uh, you're saying hey for real I already got healed let me know that in the chat for the glory of Jesus Lord we thank you for what you are doing today uh, somebody saying I don't feel a lump on my side of the liver anymore thank you Jesus my back pain is gone thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Father by faith I receive in the name of Jesus by faith I receive thank you Holy Spirit I receive my healing